right, so this is just kind of an update on the 2009 um, sexual assault case, and is that still an open investigation? Yes, it is. is it? Okay, and so what can you tell me a little bit about the case in general? <clears throat> well, obviously it's still under investigation. Mm -hmm. um, we have developed several different leads and suspects. Um, the problem is, as a victim, it no longer is in the country, okay. so it's hard to stay in contact with her and get her to view different photos and photo spreads and things of that nature to uh, have her pick, ha have her positively ID a suspect for us. So we've got several different photos we'd like like for her to see, but we're just kind of in limbo right now because she's out of the country. Right, and do you, do you kind of try to go back and forth with contact with her? Does she check in and follow? A, a little bit, but she hasn't she hasn't made contact with us for a while. Okay. And uh, uh, we, have, we have no indication that she's plan on, planning on coming back anytime soon. Okay, do you know if she was an exchange student from Peru? Uh, that I don't know. Okay. And at one, because this supposedly occurred on TCU campus, um, so at what point does this become an obligation of the Fort Worth Police Department as opposed to just TCU Police? Well, generally, all sexual assaults become, become Fort Worth Police because TCU really doesn't have the resources to investigate that stuff. We have a specialized sexual assault unit, so once the TCU police are contacted and they find out there was a sexual assault, they contact us and we take over the investigation. Okay. And I know that you said she's no longer in the country, but did she press charges? Yes. Okay. Okay, so even though time has definitely passed since this happened, what, what is the process exactly for an open investigation? Well. You, you want from the very beginning or, sure, or yeah. well, basically what we did is we contact, she was contacted mm -hmm. in, in her dorm by a TCU police. Once we determined what happened, our detectives got involved with the sexual assault unit and <clears throat> went out and talked to her and got the whole account of what happened. From that, the detectives started trying to develop leads. We sent out a uh, composites mm -hmm. that based on the description given by the uh, victim in this case and then we started giving this information out to all of the patrol officers in the area to our crime, crime analysts to disseminate to all different other agencies in that nature. We also ran a, a, a SOF detail which is a, special, a strategic operating fund. We used funds from that to go do a basically a special detail out there where we just did nothing but uh, watch different parking lots and watch the area and we had officers assigned just to this case. Um, we developed tons of, of leads and tips that came in. Um, obviously we have to investigate each one of those, find out if they're credible and then uh, uh, work through each one and, and obviously we can eliminate some based on information that we have and then some we put into a our, our case file that we want the victim to look at. Um, <coughs> Because the description was, it, it was a fairly generic description, but there were some identifiers that were going to help us out. Um, so th that's what we based a lot of our, our photos and things of that on. Um, she was a little bit obviously traumatized by the whole thing. Um, um, and because it was such an in-depth investigation, we had to talk to her several times. Um, Unfortunately, we don't like to you know we don't like to do that a lot, but unfortunately in this case we had to. So she had to kind of relive it a couple different times. But um, she was very helpful in trying to narrow down the suspects that we had. Um, up to the point where she left, um, she had viewed several photos and things of that nature, but we just hadn't hit on the right uh, person. After she left, we did hit on a suspect that we would like for her to view a photo of. It matches the composite that was uh, drawn up pretty well. Um, <clears throat> and it's right now the, that part of it is sitting in the case. And if we ever contact her and she's able to ever get back and vote, vote, view the photo lineup that we have now to positively identify that guy, that, then the case would move forward to uh, um, possible prosecution. Right now, it's just it's in what we call pended status, which means it's not going to be closed in case any other leads develop or in case any other cases of, that na of the same nature come across, we'll, we can link them together. 
And as far as I know, that was a stranger um, for her. Correct. Okay. And how does that differ? Because I built most sexual assault cases isn't that usually with, with an acquaintance or someone that you know. Usually, <laughs> you, usually they're with an acquaintance, with a uh, uh, you know a friend of a friend, somebody that you know. Um, we don't have a whole lot of just plain stranger cases. I think this case basically was, uh, I, I'm not necessarily sh convinced that she was the actual target. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a, the, su the suspect, it was a crime of opportunity and she just happened to be the person that was there. Um, <clears throat> we had a, a similar case about four days later, I think, where a female student claimed that she was grabbed from behind and bear hugged. Um, that case really didn't go a, a whole lot. Um, it matched in similar ways that the, he came from behind her and things of that nature, but the actions and stuff that the suspect did and that the victim was claiming didn't totally match, so we're not really sure that they were completely linked. And that one, and in the second one, nothing actually really happened other than the fact that he grabbed her. There was no, there was actually no assault, sexual assault. Um, of any, of any kind, she was able to get away. Okay. And did he use a weapon? Was that known or not? Well, he used a knife. He used a knife. He used a knife. Um, and he hit her in the head. According to her report, he hit her in the head with something hard, which dazed her. And that's the way he was able to drag her over to a, a dark area, she said. She's not exactly sure where. Um, then he used a knife, actually cut her on her stomach and on her back. Um, he didn't stab her, he just kind of cut her. Mm -hmm. But that obviously uh, reinforced his threat that he was going to harm her if she didn't comply. And how often do you get um, reports of sexual assault cases from just the TCU campus? Uh, not very often. Um, we take them very seriously when we get them, obviously because of the nature. Um, uh, uh, um, and, you know, there's a, obviously there's a lot of females out there that walk unattended and alone and things of that nature. But um, we try to get as much education out there as we poss as possibly can, you know, and try to educate the students to, if you're going to be walking alone at night, get an escort, call TCU police, whatever you need to do. Um, the actual sexual assault calls on campus aren't a lot. So are they a lot less than what is reported in the city of Fort Worth? Yes. Okay. Yes. How often do you get those reported from Fort Worth in general? Oh, we get, I mean, I would say f our unit gets between five to seven reports a week. Now, we also investigate other things besides sexual, our sexual assault unit, we also do injury to the elderly and things of that right. nature. Sexual assault reports probably get three to four a week on average. Um, <clears throat> Those can also range anywhere. The, just the sex cases, and we're also talking about those are indecent exposure cases, mm -hmm. things like that. But we don't do any, my unit doesn't do any investigation of any sexual uh, assault cases of victims under the age of uh, 17. Okay. Those all go to our Crimes Against Children unit. Okay. We're 17 and above. Okay, and I know because this is, I'm not sure what the process is because it, is an open investigation. Is that a, is there a police report that's allowed to be released at all? Well, you can get the you can get the police report the the, the initial police report that was uh, filed. Okay. Okay. That's basically just going to be the generic police report that she reported. Okay. Um, the case files and the investigation part of it isn't it won't, won't is not open to public record or can't be released until there is a conclusion to the case, whether that's prosecuted, completely closed, or some other form of disposition. And right now, um, like I say, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remain open in investigative status until we are able to either get a suspect or the victim requests that it be closed, and that's not going to happen. And say that the suspect was caught, he was correctly identified. Yes. Yeah, that kind of thing. But do you think that um, TCU police would let the campus know? Because we did receive an email, TCU alert, in 2009 saying this is the sketch, this is what happened. Yes, as a matter of fact, we would let TCU know to make the notification if they didn't on their own. Okay. Um, we try to work very closely with the TCU police and, and anything that happens on campus, we try, and we try to let them know how the case was closed. And they should 
send out a, a campus-wide notification.